Hello there and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Hewlink digital FPV system from the guys over at Profi CNC and Hex and specifically we're going to show you how to connect cameras up to the A system and how to get them to display on the unit itself. Now I just want to thank the guys over at 3DXR in the UK for sending this over to me early doors to have a look at. I should make you aware that this is still all in beta so anything you see is still early days it's only going to get improved upon but what we're going to do is take a look over at the whole system, show you how to connect the cameras up because there are a few things you need to be aware of and that is as follows. The system from HearLink has dual HDMI micro inputs. So you've got the option of up to two cameras, one and two. So I can connect both my GH5 and my GoPro that I've got here. Currently, you can only show one at a time, but in the future, they have said there will be a picture-in-picture -picture option as well. With regards to connecting up something like the GH5, that is fairly straightforward. You simply need to use a HDMI to micro HDMI cable like I have over there, and it will work. Picking an FPV camera isn't quite as straightforward because this is a little bit of a minefield and it's nothing to do with Hewlink and it's actually to do with the cameras themselves. Whilst there are many small digital type action cameras out there with a micro HDMI port on the side, most of them don't actually work and that port is not a proper HDMI port. That includes things like this, the SJ Cam 4000. There is a micro HDMI port, but it doesn't output HDMI signal to use as a live feed. So in my experience, if you wanna use a camera for this, you're going to need to pick from a GoPro model and not all models are supported in the sense of not all GoPros have HDMI output. The models you wanna be looking at are as follows. The Hero 7 Black, the Hero 2018, which is the model I have here, the Hero 6 Black and the Hero 5 Black. That is the recent models that all have HDMI. The lower models within those ranges do not. On the older versions, the Hero 4 Black and Silver have HDMI output, the Hero 3 Plus Black and Silver, the Hero 3 White, Silver and Black Edition, and the Hero 2. Any of those cameras support a live HDMI output, which means you can connect it to this system. However, not all of the lower models of the recent ones do. And as I've said, if you're looking for a modern GoPro, it's the Hero 7 Black, the Hero 2018, like I have here, the Hero 6 Black and the Hero 5 Black. The reason the Hero 2018 supports it, which is that one, it is basically a Hero 5 Black. And I'm not going to go into that now, but you can actually tune it into one as well. But that one, if you're looking for a good digital FPV camera, that one is worth a look. As this system is digital, you cannot connect up an analog FPV camera. So any camera must have HDMI output. That is the only thing. And as I've said, on the big cameras, it's generally not a problem, but on the small ones, stick to the GoPro line and you won't have an issue. Next, we're gonna connect each camera up to the A system, and that is very straightforward, simply HDMI in on both cameras. And then we're gonna take a look at it on the A system and just show you switching between the cameras and what settings you need to use. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is connect the cameras up to the A unit. Now, I've got myself a little LiPo battery here with the power connected, ready to go. And what we're next going to do is connect my GH5 and the GoPro. So the first thing we're going to do is plug in the full-size HDMI to the side of the GH5. And on the GoPro, it's nice and easy. The micro HDMI port is under the side here. So we're just going to go in and plug that one in just like that and then what we're going to do is turn each camera on I'm just going to focus the GH5 on that battery just so it looks there and now I've got the uh, Panasonic looking at that battery in the background and then I've got my GoPro looking at the screen of the uh, GH5 we're then going to power up the A system. Now, it's always worth noting that whenever you power the A unit up, it can take about a minute to fully connect to the ground station. In real world usage, that really isn't going to be a problem. You know, when these things first power up, you need your aircraft and your flight controller and your ESCs and everything to settle as well. So this having a small boot up time really isn't an issue. You then simply just wait for it all to boot up and connect. And as you can see on the screen of the remote controller, and I'll look at this a little bit closer now, we've got the live feed come up for the GoPro. 
and it's nice and easy as that. Now, what we're gonna do now is just quickly show you through the settings on this and how to switch between cameras and how to set between the one and the other. Okay, so when you first turn the unit on, even with the cameras connected, it will generally default this little box down here to values. And what you need to do is set that to video stream. So the first thing we're gonna do is click on it, change it to video stream, and then you can see we have option stream one, stream two, enable stream, 1080p video, grid lines, and record stream. Now, stream one is as simple as HDMI one. It really is that easy. If I tell it to switch to stream two, it should then switch over to HDMI two, and it can take 10, 20, 30 seconds to switch over. I have noticed with my GH5 specifically, the first time I tell this to switch, it can be a little bit stroppy. It's nothing to do with the ear system, to be honest. Oh, there it goes, and it's switched over. Now, that delay isn't actually the healing system. It's actually the HDMI on my GH5. For some reason, it, it slows down the first time it switches. But now, if I bounce between them, it's perfectly fine. So now, you can see we're looking straight through the lens at the... Uh, uh, camera battery and then if I jump back to stream one it will then jump back to the GoPro looking at the back of the GH5 and switching between camera streams really is that easy it, there's nothing more difficult than that you can simply jump across and then we'll give it sort of 10 20 seconds and then it will jump back over to the GH5 boom and there we go so if I now just hold that there and put my hand in front of it you can see that my hand appeared and disappeared um just talking quickly about the other options that we've got down here. Enable stream turns the video stream on and off. It's as simple as that. Uh, so if you weren't using cameras, you can just flick that option off and it's not going to kick into anything. The 1080p mode is basically sending the video image from the ear system to the ground station at 1080p. If you switch that to off, it then drops the quality to 720p. So you can reduce the quality of the live stream image if you want to. And again, I can just switch back to uh, stream one if I want to and then go back over to the GoPro and as you can see it's as easy as that um, however when it is in the 1080p mode that does mean that you're getting the highest quality video back to the ear system so I'm going to turn that back on you then got the option to turn on and off grid lines as well as the option to record the live stream and that will record it to the device now here and now because this is in beta there isn't a lot of options around that in the future there will be a lot more options to do but that is basically it and that is all there is to connecting up one or more cameras to the ear system and showing you it via the display on the device and that's pretty much it for this video. Now, I am going to talk a little bit about latency, and I'm not going to demonstrate that in this video because this is still early beta firmware. Profi, CNC, and Hex are saying that it's going to be 110 milliseconds plus the latency within your camera. Now, um, I'd like to see it cut down a little bit. I've done some testing, and I've done some external testing because this has been on an aircraft, and it's been off again to do videos like this. Um, but I think there's still some work to be done around that, but I don't really want to demonstrate that until they've done that work. I think there's still some room for improvement, and hopefully we'll see that with the next firmware update due fairly soon. Um, I have heard whispers that there should be a firmware update for this in March. And that should take this quite a long way forward at that point, hopefully, and take it into the next level. Um, and that's really it. Again, I want to thank the guys over at 3DXR in the UK. If you're looking for the healing system, in you want to buy your Pixhawk flight controller, you want to buy anything for your drone, please do go check them out. There's a link to their website in this video. They're a fantastic dealer in the UK, and they supply a huge amount around the self-build market, but they do cover all of the manufacturers as well. That's it. Thank you very much for watching and I will do another video again soon. And that is it for this video. If you've liked what you've seen, please do check out some of the other videos we have on the channel. As I've mentioned, we do have over 150 of them. Also, please don't forget to subscribe. By clicking that button in the bottom right hand corner of the video, you'll get updates. And please do check out the links in the description if you're going to buy any products. That's it. Thank you for watching and I'll do another video again soon.